Hey guys, what's up? It's your boy from Down Under Daydream Deluxe and I want to apologize for not visually appearing in this video. I've been going through a lot of stuff with work lately and it's been really hectic. But nonetheless, I wanted to push this video out as quickly as I could because I'd been working on it for quite a while and, you know, I, I kind of felt like I was procrastinating here and I didn't want to keep you guys waiting anymore, but... I finally got some lighting equipments and a green screen that I'm still trying to test out and I want to make sure everything's perfect before I appear in the next video on screen. But yeah, aside from all of that, let's get into the video. Vaporwave and Synthwave, while sonically and visually different from each other, are two of the most beloved micro-genres of electronic music that permeate the internet with the ideality of escapism, 80s and early 90s culture, and the bittersweet sensation of nostalgia, articulated through a myriad of neon and sometimes pastel colour palettes. The aesthetics of these genres in particular aren't defined solely by their sounds, they've also been expressed fluently through the medium of visual arts, which you'll find an abundance of through a single Google Images search. From there, you'll be presented with a manifold of pictures depicting various shapes, patterns and grids scattered all over the canvas, futuristic looking vehicles driving off into the sunset, palm trees, retro video game consoles, the whole nine yards. Whether it be through album covers or an online portfolio, the observer can briefly liberate themselves from reality and indulge in what they may perceive as their ideal utopian world, or at the least, be able to appreciate the beauty of this new realm that they've discovered. These artistic expressions that stem from the mind of those that feel a sort of homesickness for the 20th century's most colourful decade, whether exaggerated or seemingly accurate in detail, ended up becoming its own little scene over time through the power of the internet. Thanks to the World Wide Web establishing its own community with a manifold of subcultures uniting from all around the world, Vaporwave and Synthwave, which have both managed to expand from the URL to the IRL at their own paces, have also served as a therapeutic escape from reality for people that believe they were born into the wrong generation. And and those that wish they could relive those experiences as an adult. The days when everyone's favourite cartoons aired only on a Saturday morning, when MTV was everyone's go-to source for consuming media, when music started becoming portable, when what we now call lo-fi was deemed high def, and so on. The ethos of the 80s and early 90s to this day remain so potently influential by virtue of numerous outlets that continue to admire the decade and acknowledge the impact it's had on the majority of the music, television, video games, and fashion we see in the 21st century from both independents and commercial creators. Even though a lot of people, including the artists, can share a mutual bond or feeling with these retro and cyberpunk based archetypes, they each have a different understanding of nostalgia and what it personally means to them. But what better way to understand the arts than from the perspective of the artists themselves? So today I'd like to talk about five illustrators that I believe capture the vision and feeling of nostalgia perfectly and what makes them so unique to their audiences. So have your tickets ready my friends, because we're about to take an excursion to the most aesthetic art museum that harbors some of the greatest illustrated pieces we've seen on the internet. First off on our list, we have Mizu Cat. Mizu Cat has proven to be one of the most eccentric, multifaceted jacks of all trades in the vaporwave scene. And you may recognize some of her work from the Vapor 95 store, whom she's associated with for a few years now and has since released an array of exclusive designs for their website. She's also received a lot of attention in the last few years, gaining over 32,000 followers on Instagram. A large sum of her artwork stems from her fascination with artists such as Peter Sato, Kujiro Kumagai and Patrick Nagel, as well as various city pop musicians and synthwave producers including Laser Hawk, The Midnight and Miami Nights 1984. In using these influences of hers, she's able to manifest some breathtakingly original images by coalescing pastel colouring with 1980s anime and pop art with a refined quality that complements both the old school and modernistic look. Mizukat has also designed the cover art for various vaporwave and synthwave releases by Lucky Talisman and Mecha Pilots, Michael Weber, OSC, Sunset Grids, Cherry Ridge and a whole lot more, but some of her most astounding creations that she's ultimately renowned for online are her DIY custom designed skins that she's made for video game consoles. This was achieved in 2017 when she expanded her artistic hobby into repairing old gaming consoles from the NES to the Nintendo 64, as well as giving them more refined and retro inspired paint jobs. And these aren't just for show either, Mizukat has made these skins available for people to purchase online and have been some of her most requested and popular pieces she's sold. Mizukat's material, for the most of it, has been about trying to 
get people to understand what she feels in her craft, knowing how fast time really goes by. There are lots of changes that we see in today's era that will lead people to phrase sentences like, I miss the good old days, or it's not like what it used to be. There are many things in our lives that we can't control that either disappear or show up unexpectedly, but it's kind of important to be able to maintain some kind of emotional connection with certain luxuries and resources from a specific era that we've grown fond of regardless of what generation we were born into. Mizukat might not have experienced any part of the 80s, but that doesn't stop her from collecting her own imaginations and share them with everyone around the world. Next up we have Texas-based illustrator and producer Lunitas, who recently has been making quite a name for themselves rather quickly in the last few years. Prior to their participation in the scene, Lunitas started out as a graphic designer for a local newspaper, and over time developed a myriad of skills that they would later incorporate into a new personal interest of theirs. I wonder what you can guess what that could be. Lunitas found the overall aesthetic of Vaporwave to be visually appealing and they managed to benefit from this particular style by executing their own conceptual thoughts through Adobe Illustrator. Instead of relying on photo manipulation and pixel-based graphics to create the final product, Lunitas implements vector-based techniques and following certain color combinations and palettes to finalize the canvas. Lunitas has also seen one-third of Death's Dynamic Shroud and Orange Milk Records owner Keith Rankin, aka Giant Claw, as a major influence of theirs. Despite being distinctive in their own inventive manner from one another, you'll find that both Rankin and Lunitas envision rather psychedelic and wistful initiatives that still manage to encapsulate the exact representation of Vaporwave and its community. Through what they formally refer to as the Vapor Realm, Lunitas doesn't limit their audience to any messages or meanings that need to be acknowledged, and instead allows the spectators to conceive their own interpretations to share with others. Given that there are a lot of nuances you wouldn't find in a majority of the whole Vaporwave renaissance, Lunitas always has a way of being able to give these unlikely tidbits and intricacies their own nostalgic undertones that can help push the boundaries of the genre's identity. It'll be interesting to see where they take their work ethic next, and it can only go up from here for Lunitas and the ideas that they've helped formulate for various producers in the last few years. Now this next one is someone whose art epitomizes the utopian portrayal of the 80s and 90s perfectly. Leave it to good old Denny Blizzard to sketch some of the greatest landscapes we have ever seen on the internet through third dimensional graphics. With the number of images that he's rendered over the years, this man could very well have single-handedly created the ideal paradise for every retrowave fan abroad. From arcades to swimming pools, record stores, restaurants, bedrooms, the aesthetic interior designs, the Miami Vice-like scenery, this guy Guy's imagination makes Vice City want to eat its own heart out. By moving over from 2D photo manipulation and digital imaging in his early years to 3D modeling through Cinema 4D and Daz 3D in 2017, Denny found himself becoming all the more enthralled in the universe that he spawned. And none of this would ever have been made possible had it not been for bands and producers such as The Midnight, Time Cop 1983, and FM84 who would become the focal points of Denny's approach for what he's now renowned for. Denny describes his work as dreamlike. And artistic approach that is achieved by incorporating the surrealness of one's emotions and fantasies. Such for Denny is later reinterpreted by amalgamating this approach with his own childhood memories and that era without needing to document any accurate details of the 80s and 90s. He does however pay tribute by integrating multiple nuances of pop culture from back in the day as little easter eggs you can find scattered throughout his portfolio. It's also worth noting that some of Denny's clients have included Bandcamp for their article 10 albums that provide the perfect summer synthwave soundtrack and DJ slash house producer David Guetta for his 2020 single Let's Love featuring Sia. To see someone like him get acknowledged by one of the big guns in mainstream music, you gotta admit that's pretty fucking awesome because that gets the scene a step further into gaining more notoriety. And of course, what Denny Blissiet has spent his time conveying to the observer through each of his sketches is to reminisce the good old days and use their nostalgic feelings to bring back warm, happy memories. Though the feelings can be bittersweet for the most of it, the overall emotion is palpable, but it's also an incredibly special one to experience when any one of the five senses are triggered. Next up on our list we have Nukamachi, otherwise known by their alternative pseudonyms Wherefore and Might Be Romeo. If you're familiar with the future funk and French house label Montam Records, there's a good chance you would have seen one of Nukamachi's many names lurking in either their own musical profile or in the credits in some of the label's releases. And that's because Nukamachi has been Montam's strong right arm for a lot of the artwork you see on their bandcamp and various producers including 
including Cobalt Road, The Phantom's Revenge, Disco Holic, and Last Island. Though their work doesn't exactly carry any recurring elements that would normally cater to a Vaporwave exclusive audience, you'll find that their perspective of consistency is less about style and more about quality in their creative expression. That's not to say they haven't been pushing themselves further into designing more retro orientated prints, because that's one of the many aesthetics that have driven Nukamachi to keep pressing forward and experiment with new ideas. Nevertheless, no matter what decade influences them or what methods they choose to merge into their projects, Nukamachi makes it crucial to try and put themselves into the minds of fellow Vaporwave musicians and clients. For Nukamachi, they choose not to single out a description of their creative outlet to a specific word or phrase. They instead look at their own material and collaborations as if they're all coexisting peacefully together on one planet, or maybe even a Disney World slash Universal Studios kind of theme park. And last, but definitely not least, we're now going to talk about the man, the myth, the legend, James White, aka Signal Noise, who many deem to be the most illustrious and prominent artist of 80s themed arts in this century thus far. If you were to type Synthwave Arts into the Google Images search bar, his work would most likely be some of the first you would find in your browser. You might by the way find quite a lot of his material to be rather familiar, and that's because his resume includes creating album covers for Gunship and Wolf Club, tour posters for Metallica and Muse, and what may be his most celebrated piece to dice, the cover for the 2013 video game Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. But it doesn't stop there. He has also lent his craftsmanship as an illustrator and graphic designer for companies such as Nike, Canon, Warner Brothers, Toyota, Ubisoft, Twitch. I mean, holy fuck. How is a person this talented real? James, if you're watching this right now, tell me. How the hell are you this amazing? Seriously mate, how are you this iridescent as an artist? All of that aside, James White's experience in digital art goes as far back as 1995 and later taking it up as a professional career in 1998. But the retro futuristic and neon infused touches of his art style that we all know him for didn't fully come to fruition until 2008. James is said to be inspired by various names from the likes of Frank Frazetta, Dave McCain as well as plenty of other independent creators from across the web including Abdaziz. But the main source of his vision and ingenuity stem from his own childhood and the overall 80s culture. From what spawns in his mind and later comes to life through Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop are a series of vector-based images that he'll sketch and give a refined touch that suit more to the colour scheme from preferably the neo-noir variety. He also has a YouTube channel where he explains how he perfects his craft and goes into a lot of detail about how everything is done from the rough draft to the fully fleshed JPEG. And be sure to go subscribe to his channel because his time-lapse illustration videos are inexplicably good. They're just perplexing and astonishing to the core and I highly recommend you give them a watch. It's evident that James wears his nostalgic inspiration on his sleeve and it's certainly no challenge for him to cater to his clients needs in terms of their own imagination. There's a reason why he continues to garner praise and trust from his demograph and it's not just because of his proficiency in executing such flawless digital drawings, it's also because he, like everyone else I've listed on this video, remains true to his craft. He can connect and establish rapports with countless individuals he works with and the images he uses for reference. No matter how old or new a specific product, band, influencer, movie or anything to that effect may seem, being able to balance the equilibrium of staying dedicated to his own style while stepping into other people's viewpoints takes a lot more effort than one would think. Especially seeing as the memories of his youth has played the biggest part in his identity and symbolism, that alone goes to show how powerful an emotion like nostalgia can be on anyone. And James's artwork under the Signal Noise brand is what many consider to be the zenith of such. All in all, whether you see yourself as a visual content creator or just another casual observer of what you see on the web, everyone has their own understanding of what art and nostalgia means to them. Even through just one fifth of the five senses, it's enough to trigger some of the fondest recollections of both our own pasts and the aesthetics of yesteryear that we probably weren't around to see at the time. No matter what timeline you're from or what generation you were born into, I think we can all agree that the 80s and 90s had some of the most colourful and imaginative sources of pop culture and have had the greatest substantial impact on the media of today. So to everyone who's watching this, keep creating, remain inspired and share what you love to the world. You may never know whose life you might have saved or changed for the better. Big love from your boy down under Daydream Deluxe and I will see you in the next one.